54, over to Bruce B. Downs, and then it goes west and creeps up into the Gulf Harbors area. Um, the debates are sponsored by the Public Policy Committee of the West Pasco Chamber of Commerce. Uh, my name is Bruce Mills, and I'm a past chairman of the chamber. Um, I'd also like to introduce Chip Wickpanowski, which is, he's probably out in the, there he is over there, who's the president of the West Pasco Chamber. Um, and in the back, there are card, three by five cards that you can fill out if you have any questions for this debate or the future debates. Um, Liz Meismer, who's, who's with the chamber, is there, and also Greg Armstrong, and they will fill those out. And while you're there, I'd like you to appreciate the, the great facility we have from PHSC, and we'd like to thank them. They help us a lot. They help the chamber with Business Development Week and a lot of other community events. They're a great asset to the community. Um, with that, our moderators today are C.T. Bowen with the Tampa Bay Times. And Tina Shelton, who is the chairman of the West Pasco Chamber of Commerce. And also the reigning Queen Chasco. And Tina is basically reading the questions that you have filled out on the cards up there. Um, and with that, our candidates are Catherine Starkey. and Randy Evans. And the format will be, oh, by the way, this is all live streaming, and it will be on Facebook later, but if you want to see it live streaming, it's on webeamtv.com. That's W-E-B-E-A-M-TV.com. And it'll also be on, on Facebook later on. Um, but the, the format for tonight is the we, we flipped to see who would go first and second. And uh, the first question, the, the, they, they will each have three minutes for an opening statement. And then we'll alternate questions. Um, they'll have two minutes, the original candidate will have two minutes to answer that question. The opponent will have one minute to answer that question. And then the original candidate will have 30 seconds to rebut. We'll go back and forth, we'll keep going back and forth with questions until about 40 minutes are up, or 35 minutes are up, and then both candidates will have a two-minute closing statement. And Mr. Evans won the flip, so he gets to be the final speaker, or the final closing statement. And with that, if we could have, oh, our timers are school board member Cynthia Armstrong, and Nora George. And they have paddles, so they'll hold the paddle up with 30 seconds to go. There's another paddle with 15 seconds to go. And then there's a paddle that says stop, and there's also a little bell. So when you hear the bell, it's time to stop. With that, if everybody can turn off their phones or put it on vibrate, and if you can withhold all your applause until the very end, that would be appreciated so that we can get, so that we can get a lot of questions in. And with that, we'll let Catherine Starkey start off with her opening statement. Uh, good evening, and it's great to see everybody out here. Um, one day it would be just wonderful if we could just fill this, this room and get all, all the citizens here so they can learn um, about who their elected officials are and who the, the other uh, candidates are. Um, I am your current chair of the Pasco County Commission, and I think I arrived at this seat from a very long after a very long career here in the county of being a public servant. For the last 25 years, uh, or 24 years, I married my husband almost 25 years ago, I have been working hard to make Pasco a better place. Whether it was bringing the Gil, helping to bring the Gills Family YMCA here, uh, being one of the founders of the All Children's Hospital Guild, serving on the Swift Mud board for six years on the Pinellas Anklet River Basin board where I lowered their rates. I'm serving on the Citizens Ordinance Review Committee, working on county ordinances. I did all those things long before I ever thought um, that I would be asked to run for any office. Um, I was asked to run for school board by lead, the leaders in the community and after turning them down, um, they were persistent, and I did run for the school board. And I was elected twice to the Pasco County School Board, and in the first year I was honored to be the first statewide school board member of the year by the business community. And I have a business background. And um, 
And today I, I serve on the county commission, and again, that was not something I sought out, but I was sought out by leaders in the community. And it's, it's not an easy job. Um, we, we have to do a lot of things that are very difficult, but I, I find it very challenging and rewarding to be able to help my citizens. And I spend each and every day trying to make this community a better place, whether it's working with code enforcement on 19, um, starting training programs to help our students and our workforce grow, to talk to businesses about moving here, and to have good, efficient government. Um, I work hard for all of you every day, and I hope you will find that uh, I'm, I am um, working hard for you and that you'll put me in office again for another term. Is that three minutes? Wow, I, that's like you and me last time. So, well, I'm going to just go ahead and pass it over to Randy. Usually I can just talk and talk and talk. <laughs> Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Randy Evans, and I'm running for Pasco County Commissioner District 3. I grew up in Clearwater, Florida and have been a legal resident of Pasco County since 1992. For the last eight years, I have been a continuous resident of District 3. I am a Christian, an Eagle Scout, and have been married to my beautiful wife, Michelle, also for nearly 25 years. And we have two beautiful daughters, equally beautiful daughters, uh, Nicole, who's 21, and Emma, who's 18, and uh, we have a colleague named Lola. In, uh, 1984, I enlisted in the United States Coast Guard and was a search and rescue boat driver, a law enforcement and defensive tactics instructor, and later earned a commission as a chief warrant officer. I put myself through college while raising a family and earned a master's degree in security management. In 1995, I became a special agent for the Coast Guard Investigative Service and was in charge of three field offices and the acting assistant special agent in charge of two multi-state regions, each with six field offices. I know how to operate an agency and resolve a variety of problems. As your commissioner, I will support emergency services, repair our roads, work to reduce traffic congestion and increase traffic flow, fix the stormwater issues, and work hard to attract business to our community to improve our quality of life. In addition, I want to keep your taxes low. Eliminate wasteful spending and parking fees, or park fees, and be business friendly and an advocate for veterans. Expand public transportation and support animal services. I'm a lifelong conservative Republican and the only candidate in my race to be proudly endorsed by the West Florida Women's Conservative Republican Network and Personhood Florida Pro-Life PAC. By the way, the objective of the West Florida Women's Conservative Republican Network is to promote the election of qualified Republican women candidates to positions of leadership. My name is Randy Evans, and I would be honored to have your vote on August 30th. Commissioner Starkey, first question. West Pasco benefits from the county's mobility fee plan that discounts transportation costs in urbanized areas compared to the rest of the county. Some have suggested the mobility fee should be recalculated so it's charged uniformly across the county. Do you support that idea? If so, how then do you encourage growth and redevelopment in West Pasco if you eliminate that incentive? Oh, I. Um support the mobility fee concept. I actually um, went up to Tallahassee and helped bring it to fruition um, when I was a private citizen. The mobility fee is not only here in West Pasco, but it's in all the corridors across the county that we consider our high growth um, areas. And we use it as a carrot. I'm very big on incentives. And we use it as an incentive tool to attract high quality development um, in the areas where we think it should be. And um, when, we encourage, when we encourage development in areas far away from where all the infrastructure is, it causes government, uh, it costs government a lot of money. And so it makes great fiscal sense, especially if you're a conservative, to try and be as efficient as possible with government services. And so therefore, um, I think the mobility fee is a great program and you're starting to see other uh, counties in the state and other states come look at what we've done here as, as a great incentive tool for 
directing growth where you would like it to be? Mobility fees, I think, uh, especially the incentive program where you're basically trying to shoehorn someone into a certain area. I, I disagree with that. I think, uh, as your, your, uh, one of your people said, that it should be more equalized to where if I owned property out in Dade City and, and I wanted to put a business there, I shouldn't be penalized uh, for starting that business just because I'm out in the, the sticks, so to speak. Um, I think that growth will, will be attracted like a magnet if there's other buildings or strip malls or other businesses that are in the area. If you have a mall or something like that, someone's going to try to, to uh, put their business there as well or be in a strip mall. Or if you had a hospital, for example, and you needed a, um, you wanted to put a radiology place or a chiropractic clinic, you would automatically try to go close to where the medical areas are. So now, 30 seconds. So we don't penalize for anyone for going anywhere else. We just incentivize uh, for people to go in the high growth corridors. Mr. Evans, you mentioned public transportation in your opening statement a couple times. So what are your thoughts on our PASCO public transportation system? I think we have a long way to go. What I would like to see is uh, to help eliminate some of the burden on our highways and, and reduce congestion is to maybe start having set up some park and ride type areas where you can pull in, drop your car off, a bus comes and picks you up and takes you to say Tampa or something like that. I know it needs a lot of research and all to figure out exactly where the stops would be, but I, I think that would be good. Who Who wouldn't want to make it to the park and ride, and you have a, a little window of opportunity to, to sit there and wait for your bus. Once you get on the bus, enjoy your coffee, check your email, read the paper, and let someone else drive. I, I just, I think that's a, a great incentive. I've lived all over the country and the world, and, and uh, you know, DC and, and New York, they have great uh, mechanisms to, to keep people moving, and I think PASCO is gonna have to embrace that, and. Uh, maybe get going. Um, I too have lived all over the world and I, and I travel a lot and I have used public transportation in, in many countries. And I'm a big believer in public transportation, but in order for it to be really cost effective, you have to have high density. And we're just not there yet. But we do have to provide the service for those, those people in our community who can't drive or, or have some, some kind of impairment. So. Um, we do offer that service. Uh, we just uh, increased it this, this upcoming year. We're going to be increasing that, that service. But as we grow on the 54, 56 corridor and it becomes more dense, we are planning now to deal with um, rapid transit and, and bus, bus lines. And we're also working on the, the rail line that goes from Brooksville all the way down to St. Petersburg to be a... Um, a uh, rail corridor, uh, CSX is kind of leaving that line and has offered us in the area an opportunity to partner with them and do um, commuter rail, which is different than light rail. I get 30 seconds. The, uh, the park and rail system, I, I'm sorry, the park and ride system I think would be a precursor to some sort of a light rail or a people mover system that would eventually get in, put in place. Um, I think it's the, what is it, 2040? And uh, that system where they're, they're starting to get the, the transit going and uh, the real estate. I, I, I think if, it's like one of my bosses used to say we, when we started a new office, if you build it, they will come. Commissioner Starkey, this is another question from our audience. Thousands of home permits have been issued from Starkey Ranch to the Suncoast Parkway, and many of those residents will leave our county every day for jobs in Pinellas and Hillsborough counties. What have you done to create jobs for the monies to remain in Pasco County? I think the mobility fee is one of the creative things we've done to incentivize um, jobs to come to our area. Uh, we, you know, we are known as a bedroom community, and it's, it's hard to switch from a bedroom community to one of a, a large um, commercial industrial base, but we're working on it. 
And one of the things I did was help, was to start a manufacturing training program that's in three counties, uh, but we, we're building a workforce in manufacturing because I believe strongly that manufacturing needs to come back to America. And we're helping our local manufacturers find the workers that they need. We also, um, uh, we also have a very robust program at the Economic Development Council that incentivizes companies to come here if they qualify for, the, for certain salary ranges. And I, I'm really excited that very soon we're going to be announcing a couple big companies moving here. We're just waiting on the governor. Um, and I'm out and about every day in the community talking about how wonderful it is to live and raise a family here in Pasco County. And um, I think that in the next four or five years, you're going to see a huge change uh, with many companies opening their doors and expanding here. Would you repeat the question, please? Thousands of home permits have been issued from Starkey Ranch to the Suncoast Parkway, and many of those residents will go to other counties for their jobs. What would you do to create more jobs for the monies to remain in Pasco County instead of people leaving the county? One of the things I'd like to do is, is, is maybe change the business rules to where it's more business friendly. We've got way too many uh, rules that discourage business. And if I owned a business and they said, well, you can only have this and your sign can only be this large and they won't allow these types of signs and you can only have so many flags or whatever, that's very discouraging. If you dumped a, a bunch of money in, into a business trying to get it started up um, and you're not allowed to advertise or, or do something that draws people in there, it's, it's very discouraging. So in short, uh, review the regulations and, and make some changes, make it more business friendly. Another innovative program I brought to Pasco County is the International um, Economic Development Council. And I was just actually um, put on the National International Economic Development Council. We started this program so that we can, one, foster um, better relationships with the international businesses we have here in Pasco County right now and to um, help companies, the local companies, learn how to export. We've had two almost sold out expos now, helping local companies learn how they can um, export their products, and we're gonna attract more international companies here. Mr. Evans. Uh, please, since we're in West Pasco, please give us your thoughts on the Harbor's redevelopment plan and what components you would like to see accomplished in the next four years if you're elected to the commission. Well, the Harbor's uh, development plan runs from Little Road and goes west towards the water, for, for those of you that don't know. And it's basically a, a redevelopment plan where you, you try to uh, redevelop or refurbish the, the current or existing buildings that are there and, and try to revive the area and you bring business. And the idea is for things to move in the upward movement to where you're getting more density, as they were saying, um, and your first floor, it's kind of like uh, Longleaf. If you've ever been there, if you look on the first floor, it's nothing but, you know, businesses, and then above it are apartments, and that's kind of the, uh, the way that these new millennials are going. It's kind of difficult when you start getting gray and trying to understand why people want to live in a, a densely populated area. I kind of like being in this area. Um, but getting back to to what should be done is, is we, we need to get developers on board and, and start looking at areas that are, are run down. Uh, what's the place over there called uh, Fallujah? The big building that's just north of the county line on US 19. And uh, start working on getting some of those older buildings refurbished and, and start implementing the, the harbors. So we've taken the county and we've divided it into five planning areas, and one of those planning areas is the harbors, which goes from the Hernando County line to the Pinellas County line and, and um, goes in off the coast a bit. And um, we, have, we have divided that harbors area into 12 or 13 um, distinct little communities, of which I have four or five in my district, in my commission, 
And what I've been doing in my area is organizing community leaders within those areas. And we've been going around, walking with code enforcement, and the sheriff, um, animal services, uh, community development. And we've been working on cleaning up those neighborhoods. One of my champions is here, Kelly Miller. And we have turned around Colonial Hills. And Ke Kelly Miller's done a fantastic job. And I'm hoping to clone her. We have another one of those coming up um, in the Elfers community next week. Um, we also are partnering with Port Ritchie and New Port Ritchie. Now, I've asked for the first ever sit down with the, the elected officials in Port Ritchie and New Port Ritchie so we can all work together to revitalize the jewel of the harbors, which is the Miller Bayou Main Street area. Um, I agree. The, the blight is a big thing. If you go to my website, randyevans2016.com, you can see where I'm, I'm trying to tackle the, the blight. I'm for. Uh, getting on the commercial and residential blight and getting Pasco County cleaned up, adding more code enforcement if need be, uh, supporting the sheriff and making sure that we can clean up these areas so we can get them, uh, get people in there and, and start getting business growing. Commissioner? Uh, I ask this one in deference to the timekeeper to my right. <clears throat> The Paso School Board has proposed nearly doubling the impact fees to build more classrooms. <laughs> what are your thoughts on a higher school impact fee for new schools? Uh, you know, we, it's very important that our schools um, aren't over, overcrowded and, uh, and busting at the seams. So it's, it's a delicate balance that we all have to walk between making sure we um, don't slow down the economy, but that we have ad adequate schools. And we have not been approached by the school district yet to talk about school impact fees, so I don't know all the details yet. But I can tell you that one of the things, uh, I, I just had a discussion with school board member yesterday, maybe this is sunshine, I don't know. But when I was on the school board, I tried very hard to get those playgrounds and green spaces around the schools opened up. I feel those, that's taxpayer money. And, and that should be open to the, to the kids in the community. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to horse trade. And um, if we can get some more parks for our community, I'm willing to listen to what the, the school district needs. Can you repeat the question? The Pasco School Board has proposed nearly doubling of the impact fees to build more classrooms. What are your thoughts on a higher school impact fee for new schools? I don't like raising any fees. Um, I, I don't like raising taxes, but I do value education. Um, I have a master's degree. My wife is a, a former teacher. My mother was a teacher. And the, the children are our future, and we have to make sure that they're learning and, and growing and have every opportunity to, to better themselves and, and make our our country and county better. Uh, the, the fees, if need be, uh, I, I'd really have to look at, I'm, I'm not for doubling, I would really like for them to, to maybe look at, at tightening the belt and seeing where they can make cuts uh, where possible, and then uh, take a look at it afterwards. When I was on the school board, one of the things I did was um, start uh, we worked on the interlocal agreement between the county and the school district, and we set up a committee to look at co-location, which is uh, co-locating schools with public, with the county amenities. And we've got the first true one coming up in Starkey Ranch, where we share libraries, we're sharing a, a theater, we're sharing a park. Um, if we can be creative and use the public money wisely like that, we can stretch everyone's dollar really far, and that just is just common sense. Hey, Mr. Evans, if you were elected county commissioner, what would be your proactive approach to alleviating the flooding issues, specifically on the west side of Pasco County? Well, I actually live in Trinity, and after the, the flooding, I got on board the, uh, the flood task force. One of the things that happened uh, is the commissioners voted to raise the, the stormwater fee to from 47 to 57, and in order to actually, and that, that's just one crew that takes care of the entire county, cleaning out ditches and, and uh, replacing the, 
the uh, culverts. What we really, and right now, if we maintain the, the current fee, it'll take, I believe, over 90 years to, to get the entire county cleaned up. And obviously, we can't afford that. Um, the proposal was that we raise the stormwater fee to $80, but the commissioners uh, uh, said no to that. I, again, I, and if you look at our surrounding counties, they're, they're, I believe Pinellas is, pays $119 for stormwater fees, um, and Hillsborough's uh, comparable. So we're really behind when it comes to that. Um, I am actually for raising the fee to $80. And again, I, I don't like doing it, but we are behind the eight ball and people need relief with this flooding. Um, I, I too am uh, thinking that that $57 is not realistic and I, I tried to get our fellow uh, commissioners to raise it, Commissioner Mariano and I did, but we were unsuccessful. And you know, when I served on the Swift Red Board, the Pinellas Anklet River Basin Board, we collected money uh, from, from our residents to help pay for stormwater and those boards were dissolved and that money went away. So you, you were paying for stormwater relief, uh, but we don't collect that money anymore because that, that was going to Swift Mud and then back to us. So um, it's a real challenge to try and retrofit stormwater systems into the aging neighborhoods. Just last week, I took Senator Lapdala and uh, Representative Murphy on a bus with a bunch of county officials. We gave them an education before we went on the bus and we drove all the hot spots in this area so they could know the challenges that we have um, here in West Pasco. And, I've, and we, are, we are hoping to engage some in Washington. So I'm gonna look in Washington, I'm gonna look in Tallahassee uh, for money to help our citizens. I concur. Thank you. Commissioner Starkey, after many, many years, this county still seems very much divided. How do we get the East and the West to work together? Um, I think we, we're divided in one sense, but in another we're not. Um, just the, the, na uh, the, the people out um, in the Dade City area tend to be more rural, people who choose a more rural lifestyle. Zephyr Hills is really more um, snowbirds. So I don't think we can change that, but I think we're all, we're all fans of Pasco County. Uh, but even tomorrow night, I am holding a meeting in San Antonio with the, with the um, Dade City elected officials and the community there to figure out how we can safely add um, bike shoulders in the San Antonio Hills. So we have great relationships and you may feel that it's like that, but I, it's really not. I believe the people on the east side live there for a reason. Uh, I grew up in Clearwater, like I said, and, and now live in Trinity, and I have turkeys and all kinds of owls and all kinds of deer. Eight-point buck went behind my, my screen of my pool cage. It's really neat, and uh, I, I love living in Pasco County, and I think the people that live in Dade City love the rural area. They don't want the hustle and bustle. They don't want the traffic and congestion. And I respect that, and I think they respect us over on this side. If you want that, then you move over to the west side, if you, uh, or, or to Wesley Chapel. That's really a, a big booming and growing area. But I, I, I don't see that we have a problem working with each other. I think we have a mutual respect. Just yesterday, um, under my um, year of chairmanship, we passed two ordinances that have been stuck for almost 10 years. The rural, uh, East Side Rural Protection Ordinance and the, um, the uh, Ecological Corridors. And that, that Rural Protection Ordinance uh, is really gonna help us keep that East Side uh, rural uh, without damaging anyone's property values. Um, but we'll, we'll have beautiful hills and beautiful scenery out in the East Side and we'll be able to keep what's really special in Pasco there. Mr. Evans. Yes. Uh, during the uh, Great Recession, Commissioner Mariano proposed a local first ordinance in which local vendors would be given preference in bidding for county government business. Now, I'm going to take a wild guess here and suggest that we're probably going to have another recession before 2020. So if you're on the commission, 
Do you favor a purchasing ordinance that gives preference to local vendors, even if it could result in higher costs to the public? I am. And the reason is uh, we need to support residents of Pasco. If you support a business in Pasco County, um, you're, you're supporting the vendor that, that supplies the food. Uh, there's payroll. There's people that are, are working for that person, possibly. And uh, they're paying taxes, and, and they're making, making Pasco Pasco. If you're taking the money and uh, you know, giving it to Hillsboro or, or Hernando or something like that, we don't derive a benefit other than the, the good or, or service. Um, by the same token, even with my campaign, every dime of my campaign expenditures has, has been to businesses in Pasco County. I believe if you're going to walk the walk, then you or talk the talk, you walk the walk, and, and I, I do. I believe in, in supporting PASCO businesses, and I, I would actually, yes, I would give them preference, um, and, it, and go from there. When I was on the school board, one of the um, matrix, matrixes that we used was the distance of your office from the school board. And so that, um, that helped, that incentivized companies to have offices in PASCO County. So. It, you don't, want to, you don't want it so that the bids um, are, you're paying more because you're hiring someone local, but I'm certainly in favor of local people. So there, there are ways, I think, that we can um, encourage more uh, local participation. And one of the ways that we can do that, too, is uh, some of these contracts that we give out to engineers, they're not necessarily by bid. Um, so. Uh, we're always looking for ways to help our local businesses, and um, I think that matrix is a good thing. We don't have it at the county, but we had it at the school district. Nothing, Dad. Commissioner? I think every candidate in every campaign has mentioned jobs and economic development, uh, but there hasn't been a lot of specifics. So please specifically tell us what you would like to accomplish over the next four years if you're reelected to better the county's economy? Well, I, I touched on this a little bit. I'm very um, big on manufacturing. So many of these jobs have gone to China and Vietnam. And um, w with the changes in technology and how clean manufacturing has become, there's no reason why we can't do what Charlotte and other areas in the country have done and bring manufacturing back. A lot of our com com companies have um, some summer homes or vacation homes here, why not bring your business here? So I'm very big on working with manufacturers. And like I was mentioning before, um, uh, the low-hanging fruit are all those foreign companies that are looking to move here. You, you may have read in the paper where Hillsborough and Pinellas County have formed the Tampa Bay Export Alliance. And I keep knocking on the door saying, please uh, let PASCO participate in that. But we... I think we're almost inside, but we're not there yet. But I decided not to let that stop me, so I started our own. And, um, and so uh, I've kind of lost. What was the question? Started going down about jobs. Yeah, what specifically would you do to improve the Pasco economy over the next four years if you're reelected? So those are uh, two of the main things that, I, that I've been working on. And I think that um, having a clean, beautiful looking county makes a difference. If we want to attract quality companies, we need a good sign ordinance. We need landscaping. We need the blighted buildings knocked down. We just passed an ordinance to clean that up. We need the lawns mode of these um, homes that are foreclosed upon. And we just need to present our best foot forward. That's what you do in real estate. You clean, up, you clean it up and make it look pretty. And um, I've done, been working on that for 20-something years. I started a 501c3 called Scenic Pasco back in the day, and we changed a lot of ordinances. So um, I think... I think I actually am probably the most qualified person on the county commission that's been working on this. I, this is what I do all day. I just left a meeting at the PEDC offices working on bringing another company here. So, Would you repeat the question one more time? I, I want to make sure. Cause okay. I think uh, every candidate in every race has mentioned jobs and economic development in their campaign. But there hasn't been a lot of specifics. So what specifically would you do to enhance the PASCO economy if you're elected the county commission? Well, again, I, I think uh, the commissioners are, are 
voting to eliminate the residential and commercial blight, like my opponent said. Um, one thing would be to, again, keep the money here in Pasco County. Like I said, if you, if you want to attract businesses and you want people to live here, we need to start spending our money here in Pasco County instead of, of you know, going to Pinellas or surrounding counties. Again, it helps the economy grow. Your suppliers, if you're getting supplies here, they're picking up more supplies and, and uh, making more money on goods and services. You're, you're employing people, they're paying taxes, they're buying foods, and, and it helps all the way around. It's like a big circle, I have 15 seconds. Um, I, I think the, the sign ordinance uh, really needs to be looked at. We, we really need to make it more business friendly, and I, don't, I think we can, we can go a lot further in that respect. Oh, she, okay, I, I just had an idea and then it went away. Um, so it was about bringing jobs here. I, I had something really good to say and I forgot. Can I, can I hold those 30 seconds for something later? For, can I park those somewhere? <laughs> well, we're gonna wrap up now with closing statements. So we'll start with Commissioner Starkey. You have three minutes and then we'll move to Mr. Evans. Okay. Um, so I, Sorry, two minutes. Two minutes. Well, we'll see if I fill those. But so I, I, I hope that um, you've heard a little bit about what I've been doing during my time on the county commission. Um, you've heard I spend a lot of time with code enforcement, especially, you know, on, on the 19 corridor. I've uh, asked, um, I've sat down with Senator Fasano to work with the tax collector's office to identify businesses that may have um, set up shop on 19 uh, without proper uh, proper permits, especially used car dealerships, if you've noticed that up and down 19. Um, I've worked with the building community to um, help streamline the building and permitting process. That's something that this county drastically needed. We had a national reputation of not being um, business friendly. And so uh, I think we're making strides, but we're not quite there yet. We have a great opportunity to um, now go out and do a national search for a new county administrator, and I think we are well positioned to get a very good top quality candidate uh, here to help us through the next um, 10 years. Um, we still have lots of challenges in front of us. There are 67 counties in the state of Florida. We're 64th in the amount that we fund our parks department. Uh, we have a lot of challenges with stormwater still. And we still have a lot of challenges with uh, rebuilding our old uh, and failing roads. And it's going to take a lot of heavy lifting from um, everybody in the county to get us to where we need to be. And that's the goal that we've stated, and that's to be a premier county. I think I have the relationships for the Tampa Bay area and for the state to help um, make this happen. And I plan to use all those relationships to help make my community a better place. So thank you very much. And I hope you'll vote for me. Four years ago, 57% of the voters rejected my opponent. She then had to rent a home in District 3 to satisfy the residency requirement. The same year she told a reporter she would divide her time between two residences in District 3 and District 4. The law requires that she maintain continuous residency in the district. The Pasco County Commissioner's seat represents the people, and I will not forget that. I am not a multimillionaire with family, business, or property interests to protect, and I will not have to abstain from voting as a county commissioner due to a conflict of interest. While my opponent towns waiting to attract business, wanting to attract business to Pasco County, she has spent nearly $9,000 to support businesses outside of the county. In contrast, every dime of my campaign expenditures has supported local businesses in Pasco. My opponent voted to allow illegal aliens in a homeless shelter and double the capacity. My opponent voted to rob $8 million from the Capital Improvement Fund and replace it by raising our gas tax to the highest in Tampa Bay area. She then wanted to be reimbursed for her gas and cell phone. My opponent did not want to change the sign ordinance to be more business friendly and wants to limit the number of American flags that can be displayed. And last, my opponent wants to spend and waste one or 2.4 million of our tax dollars on a two-lane roundabout in her old neighborhood. In closing, 
You have a choice between someone who talks a good game but fails to deliver, or a lifelong conservative Republican with a proven record, and as evidenced by my financial support of Pasco businesses and 27 years of honorable military service, saving taxpayers thousands of dollars through physically responsible budgets and administration. I will work hard for you as your next county commissioner. My name is Randy Evans, and I would appreciate your vote on August 30th. Thank you. Thank you both.